Hi, good morning guys. So great to be back here this morning, Sunday morning. And I believe that God is uh, about to touch us this morning. And, and, and you know, uh, last week we were looking at uh, the ten roles of the Holy Spirit. And we were doing point number one and two. Number one was about the Holy Spirit is a helper who teaches and reminds. And then after that, in uh, number two was the Holy Spirit convicts the world of sin, of righteousness and judgment. We were talking about that. And this morning I'm just going to continue with point number three. And I think I'm just going to stick with that this morning because I want to take this slow and really kind of get your mind into this thing and get to understand this thing. You know, and um, I believe that God is busy in this time, really busy getting us acquainted with the Holy Spirit, getting us into a place where we need to understand and know the work of the Holy Spirit, where we need to understand the voice of the Holy Spirit, the guiding and the leading of the Holy Spirit, you know, because we are going into times that are kind of difficult and we have difficulty in this time and time ahead and but if we as believers knows the Spirit of God and knows the working of the Spirit of God and 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 knows as a relationship with the Holy Spirit he will guide us through these things nothing will harm us it won't uh, it won't or I won't say nothing will harm us but it won't affect your lives as much as it would affect someone that is in the world so it's important that, that we learn to hear the voice of the Spirit, learn to understand the things of the Spirit, uh, learn to get into the mind of the Spirit, and let the mind of the Spirit get into us, you know, to under, for us to understand the will and the purposes of God. So this is very important. But before we start this morning, let's just pray. Father, we just come to you this morning and we thank you for your word, Father, that is sharper than any uh, double-edged sword. Father, we thank you that your word penetrates dividing soul and spirit, joint and marrow this morning. And Father, I pray that your word will not return to you void, but it will accomplish the purpose for which it is sent, that it will bring forth the fruit in our lives that we desire, that we so desire, that it will bring forth the, the growth that we desire, Father, in Jesus' name. And Father, that it will accomplish the work that you want to do through our lives, that we will accomplish the calling and the purpose for which we are sent into the earth, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Amen. So I hope you're all well. I hope you're enjoying um, uh, this morning's service. Well, so I'm just going to jump right into it. Uh, we don't have a band. We don't have a lot of worship to do before. So I'm just going to get into the Word and let's not waste time. Now the Bible's uh, uh, point number three this morning that I'm going to look at is the Holy Spirit dwells in believers and fills them. So we need to understand that the Holy Spirit dwells in believers. And that's, that's one of the greatest things that you... Uh, if you think and if you stop and think about that, that the Holy Spirit dwells in you and the Holy Spirit is part of, He is God, He's a part of God. Uh, the three, uh, uh, three in one, He's a part of God and to think that He is God and He dwells inside of you, that's how you should see it. You know, that should already put your, you in a place where you start thinking of how am I living, what am I doing, uh, what is my reaction to things that are happening around me, you know, and, and, and even if there's sin in your life or stuff that's wrong, if you start realizing that God lives inside of you, that should change your way of thinking, that should change your thoughts, and that should bring you into a place of realizing what you carry, that you are a carrier of the presence of God. The Holy Spirit is God's presence in the lives of believers. It's God's very presence in your life. Wow. Just think about that for a moment. Just think about it that God's very presence is in you life in your life. You are a carrier of God's presence. This body that you have is carrying the presence of God. I can't stop saying this because I want you to realize that you body, as you lying there in your bed this morning, it's still early, maybe you're sitting in the living room or wherever, maybe you're sitting somewhere on your phone or your tablet or whatever, it's just for a moment think of your body and see that you are a carrier of the presence of God. What an awesome thing to realize. Now. The Bible says in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 3 verse 16, 
He says, do, not, do, do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's Spirit dwells in you? Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's Spirit dwells in you? Wow. Let's look at this in the Amplified. You know by now that I love the Amplified because it just says everything so much better. Let's just look at this. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 16. He says, Do you not discern or understand that you, the whole church in Corinth, are God's temple, His sanctuary, and that God's Spirit um, has His permanent dwelling in you to be at home in you collectively as a church and also individually? Wow. Let's break this up. So he says, Do you not discern or understand Paul is talking to the church in Corinth and he wants to bring them to the understanding like I'm trying to do this morning he wants to bring them to the understanding and maybe many of you know this I know all of you know this but the thing is uh, what Paul is saying yeah you know we know these things sometimes we 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 know it's there we put it in our mind and we carry on with our everyday life I was thinking this morning I was standing just here in the kitchen looking through the window and I was thinking the dog is lying here behind me. I was thinking to myself, you know, uh, it's so easy to tell people to go out and we must reach the world and that. But when you go into your your um, uh, workplace or whatever and you stand there and the reality hits you of that you must tell people about God or the way you live your life or whatever, then it's more difficult to, to do that than to think of it. You know, when you talk about it in church, everyone, yeah, 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 and everyone's happy about it. But to do it is sometimes something that then the reality kind of strikes you. And in that same sense this morning, you know, I want the reality to strike you. The Bible says, do you not discern? He talks about discernment. That uh, you need to grasp it. You need to realize it. Paul is talking to the Corinthian church. He says, do you not discern and understand? He wants them to understand it. He's making this point. Do you not discern or understand that you, the whole church in Corinth, the whole church, not just um, one church or, or a little church. You know, so many times we want to think that our church is the only church that's right and the only church that's doing something. But Paul always has the whole church in mind. So he says uh, that you, the whole church in brackets, are God's temple, His sanctuary. That you, do you not understand, do you not discern that you are God's temple? You are His sanctuary, the place where He comes and makes a dwelling. And that God's Spirit has His permanent dwelling, says the Bible. So when you receive the Spirit, when you receive Jesus into your life, you receive the Spirit of God and He makes a permanent dwelling in you. Wow. God doesn't want to leave you. He doesn't want to move out of your body. He doesn't want to move out of that temple that you, have, that you are. He wants to make a permanent dwelling in there. And He makes a permanent dwelling, says the Bible. The Bible says nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing can separate you. Once you've asked Jesus to come into your life, nothing can separate you from the love of God. Now the Bible says a permanent dwelling in you to be at home in you. <laughs> now this already is a question. Is God at home in you? Is He at home in your body? Is He at home in, in your flesh? Does He feel at home there? Is it a place where He is happy to be? Or is He kind of shoved into a corner somewhere and He's just always sitting there and wondering when it's time for Him to come out or what, what? You know what I'm saying? So here yeah, He says, to be at home in you collectively as a church and also individually. So here Paul is bringing it again. He says, collectively as a church. So in your church, is the, is the Holy Spirit welcome there? Is He making Himself a home there? Is, is uh, In the church, does He feel welcome? You know, and so many times in our churches, we just, uh, again, we put the Holy Spirit, uh, he's, he's just there somewhere. You know, our program is so important. We have to come in, we have to sing a few songs, we have to uh, uh, pray a quick prayer, 
and then we must uh, take up the offering and quickly preach a quick word and then send everyone home again uh, uh, because we don't want to waste people's time you know and the people's time are precious and if we we take too long then they won't come back again I mean when we do that it's uh, when you go and visit friends for me to go and visit friends and I have kind of a time deadline I know uh, many people are not like that uh, but for me, when I go visit someone, I go through the trouble to go there. And when I visit there, I want to visit. I want to sit and I want to talk and I want to uh, fall asleep or whatever, halfway. Uh, and, and, and I just want to visit, you know. I want to relax in that place. And when it's time to go, I go, you know. But if I'm visiting someone and I just have to get there and I have to visit quickly, just about an hour, and then we're going to go, then it's not a friend. It's not uh, someone that you feel uh, at peace with. It's not someone that you feel, uh, you, you know, you're not welcome there because you kind of just fit in to that hour or that time. But when you have true friends, you can go to them and you can stay there all day long. You do with them what they're doing. They do with you what they're doing. And you just become a part of one another. You talk about everything. You don't have to entertain them. They don't have to entertain you. You know, you, you just at peace. And the Bible says that He wants to make Himself at home in you. Isn't that powerful? And this is what the Scripture says. Uh, 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 dwelling in you, to be at home in you, collectively as a church. So sometimes we bring, we want to fit God into our program into the church. But as the church, sometimes I believe that we must just open up and we must allow the Holy Spirit to be welcome, to be at home, to do what He wants to do. You know, He is the honored guest and it's His home. Your body, your temple is His home. It's not your home, it's His home. <laughs> so the Bible says collectively as a church and also individually. So in your body, you are a carrier of the presence of God. You're a carrier of the anointing. But listen what the Bible says further on. It says in 1 Corinthians 3 verse 17. He says, If any one of you does hurt to God's temple or corrupts it with false doctrines or destroys it, God will do hurt to him and bring him to the corruption of death and destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, sacred to him. And that temple you, the believing church, and its individual believers are. Wow. So let's just look at this. The Bible says, everyone who does hurt to God's temple. Now remember that you are a temple of the Holy Spirit. You are a carrier of His presence. You are His dwelling place. You are His sanctuary. And we can say that of the church as well as a whole. We are His sanctuary. We are His dwelling place. And the Bible says, if anyone does hurt to God's temple or corrupts it with false doctrines or destroys it. Now, in this scripture, you know, so many times uh, we, do, we see this as, as for the church, someone that comes and tries to destroy the church. Uh, brings false doctrine sometimes it's just in-house as Christians comes into a church and you bring false doctrine or you say stuff that should not be uh, that's not biblical you try and lead the church on a wrong path um, into some sect or something then you are doing hurt to the body of Christ you are doing hurt to the temple of the Holy Spirit and the Bible says if anyone does do hurt to him that God will Hurt, uh, do hurt to him and bring him to the corruption of death and destroy him. So in the church, if you bring corruption and destruction, God will destroy you. And that should be a warning, you know, for every believer that when you're in a church, respect the church, respect the body of Christ. And also for the government and also in this time, you know, with, with we are with the COVID-19 and all these things. I want to put a warning out there to the government. I want to put a warning out there to, to anyone that, that's not a Christian or that's not part of the church. The Bible says if you do hurt to his body, then God will hurt you. He will bring hurt to you and he will destroy you. So don't think that you can come and just walk over the church. Don't think that you can just do to the church what you want to do. Say about the church what you want to say. You need to be very careful how you react and what you say to the church. 
but also I want to take this into the individual side. You know, as a Christian, your body, you are a carrier of His presence. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says if you do hurt to the temple as an individual, then God will destroy you as well. You know, and, and when you look at this, I'm just, uh, sometimes uh, one day I went to a lady and she wanted to commit, um, uh, uh, she wanted to take her own life, you know. And and as I was talking to her, the Holy Spirit said to him, gave this scripture to me and he said to me, tell her that if she dies today and she opens her eyes, she will open it in hell because she brought destruction to the temple of the Holy Spirit. Wow. And that kind of shocked me and I told it to her just like that. I said to her very slowly, I said, do you realize that today, if you take your life today, if you have drunk that pills or you have done what you wanted to do and you open your eyes, you will open your eyes in hell because you have destroyed the temple of God. You know, and I want to tell you this morning and I want to warn you, you know, take care of your body. You know, so many times we don't, we overeat, we smoke, we drink, we do all kinds of things that brings destruction to our bodies. We do not exercise. Um, and I mean, it's a body of the flesh. I mean, in everyone's eyes, it's just uh, the body is just the flesh. It's going uh, to die anyway, you know. But as long as you have a body on the earth, and this is what you must realize, as long as you have a body on the earth, you have a place where God can come and make a dwelling. You have a body which you can use to preach the word. You are his vessel in the earth that he uses to preach the gospel, to lay your hands on the sick. Because Jesus doesn't put, put his hand out of heaven and lays it on the sick. He has filled us with his presence, with his spirit, with his power, with his authority. We are carriers of his presence. Jesus said, it's advantageous for you that I go so that I can send the helper. We looked at that last week and that he will come and he will guide you into all truth. And the Bible says, uh, and, and, and when you look at that, then we are carriers of his presence. And we are His temple. We are His vessel that He uses on the earth. God won't give you money through. He won't let it fall out of heaven. He will bless you through a person. You are a carrier of His presence to be a blessing to someone else. To carry the presence, carry the word, carry the knowledge, carry the prophecy, carry the gifts. You know, And if you hurt that temple, then God will judge you. If you hurt that temple, if you bring destruction to that temple, God will destroy you. And But in that, just realize that you are God's temple and God can use you. While you're in the earth, God can use you. I always, uh, I had a one message that I once preached about Jonathan, the opportunity of a lifetime. You have only got one lifetime to live and to do something that will be significant for God. Only one lifetime. If you mess up that lifetime, you've missed it. You won't have it again, you know, but it's an opportunity for you. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, it talks about the, the, the cr crowd of witnesses that is stirring us on, you know, to carry on and do the work of the Lord. I want to tell you, there's a crowd of witnesses, Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Samson and David, all those guys are sitting there and they're looking at you because you have the opportunity right now in the earth to do the will and fulfill the purposes and the plans of God. You know, it must be something in your spirit that drives you to keep on doing, keep on pushing. Don't sit back and hold back. Keep on doing, keep on pushing for the kingdom of God, you know, because they are, are stirring us on and they say, come on, Trevor, do this. Come on, uh, do that, you know, and put your name in there. There is a purpose and a plan that God has for your body. You are a carrier of his presence and you only have one lifetime to use this body as a vessel of his presence and to change your family, change your uh, uh, town, change whatever is around you, change your country God has got a plan and a purpose for you and that you are a vessel that carries the very powerful presence of God inside of you and that's just waiting to be used all right I just want to encourage you with that
So the Bible says if anyone hurts the temple of God, God will destroy him. So take care of your body. Take care of the life that you have. Because the, the, the life is in the blood, says the Bible. While you're alive, there is life in you. And the Spirit of God can flow through you and work through you. Think about that today. I just want to continue and I want to end with this this morning. The Bible says in verse 18 of that same scripture. It says, do not deceive yourselves. If any of you think you are wise by the standards of this age, you should become fools so that you may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness in God's sight. And it is written, he catches the wise in their craftiness. And again, the Lord knows that the thoughts of the wise are futile. So then, no more boasting about human leaders. All things are yours. Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or the present or the future, all are yours. And you are Christ and Christ is of God. Let's just look at that. So the Bible says, do not deceive yourselves so we can be deceived. We can deceive ourselves. We can have a wrong thought and we can deceive ourselves with our own wisdom. That's what he's talking about, worldly wisdom. So many times we see everything in a worldly way. We look at our lives in a worldly way. We look at leaders in a worldly way. We look at so many things in a worldly way. And I think that is where most of us miss it. The things of God because we're looking at everything in a worldly way and we do not look at it from the heart and the mind of God you know and the plans and the purposes of God so do not look at things in a worldly way the Bible says do not deceive yourselves we can be deceived by looking at things in a worldly way if any of you thinks you are wise by the world by the standards of this age and today we see so many things happening and so many you know in the uh, politics and we see in America and we see all these things happening in our own country in South Africa that everyone thinks they're wise everyone tries and do things and everyone thinks they're doing something great you know and the Bible actually talks here about the, uh, the, 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 the he catches the wise in their craftiness you know the foolish in their craftiness and he talks about people that live according to the world and follow the ways of the world and have agendas and plans and we've heard in the news so many there are so many agendas um, so many plans by the rich and so many plans that people has got to do certain things and try certain things and to control the world and to control the population and with all these things we hear you know and and so many times uh, even in our own country there is strategies and there's plans and there's the craftiness of the foolish uh, or, or the worldly people to try and control things and bring corruption and steal and whatever you know in our own country we see that i don't have to go into that but listen to what the Bible says. Do not deceive yourselves. If any of you think you are wise by the standards of this age, you should become fools. It's the foolish things that confounds the wise. It's the simple things of God. Realizing that you're a car carrier of His presence that will make you wise. When you start living according to the Word. But if you live according to the standards of this world, uh, you're a fool. And the Bible says we must become fools so that you may become wise. You need to get to a place where you say, Lord, you are wisdom. You are the one that can guide us. You are the one that can give us uh, the right direction, the right steps. Don't try and work it out in your own mind, in your own ways. God will guide us the right way. He says, for the wisdom of this world is foolishness in God's sight. To God, the things of this world, the plans of man are foolish. He laughs at that. The foolishness is in God's sight. And it is written, He catches the wise in their craftiness. I want to stand still there for a moment. He says, He catches the wise in their craftiness. And I was just saying, you know, we have all these agendas and all these things happening in the world in this time. We have all this crookedness and all this stealing and corruption and all these things that's happening. But the Bible says, He catches the wise and the foolish in their craftiness. He catches the, uh, the, wise, uh, the, the wise in their craftiness. Those that think like the world that's got all these plans, all these ideas, God catches them in their craftiness. It makes me think of um, the Bible talks in, uh, let me just quickly see if I can find it. 
it says in uh, um, first uh, second kings second kings 6 and verse 8 it talks about the king of aram how he went and uh, he, he, he planned and he said, I'm going to set up camp here and I'm going to set up camp there when they were in war and uh, enemies of Israel. And how they, they he set up camp in different places and every time uh, he, he was planning and he had strategy and stuff that he wanted to do against Israel. And then Elisha the prophet would hear that and he will send word to the king of Israel and tell him, that the king of, uh, of Aram is going to put up camp there and there and there. And then the king of Israel will know that and he will avoid those places or he will act according to what he knows. And the king of Aram got angry and he started saying, but listen, who is against us? Who is telling the king of Israel everything that I am saying and everything that we want to do? And the, and, and the servants came together and they said to him, no, sir, uh, no, king, it's not us it's the prophet Elisha he tells the king even the things that you are discussing in your room the private stuff he's telling them to the king of Israel that's how they know so the king went out and he sent all his troops against uh, to go and find Elisha where is he and they said he's staying there and they went out uh, to find him a whole army of men and the next morning Elijah's servant came out and he, and he looked and he saw them surrounded by these men you know the story and, and, and he was surrounded by them and he was kind of afraid and he went to Elisha. He said, Elisha, what must we do? And Elisha said, Lord, open his eyes. And he opened his eyes and he saw that the angels behind them and everyone surrounding them. And he said, they that are with us are more than they that are with them. You know, and I believe in this time as well. You know, whatever the world plans, whatever the world does, they that are with us are more than they that are with them. I've realized this in my life, and I want to give you this as a message of hope. A few years ago, or, or lately, I, I, I want to do open air services, and a, a, like a year or so ago, I wanted to do that, and I was kind of worried, but if I go into the street and I do an open air, or I go into a park and I do an open air, um, what will happen? Will the government come against me? Will the police or what? what? And I've done this many times in my life. And, and when I started thinking about that, the Lord spoke to me and he said to me, Trevor, they that are with you are more than they that are with them. And I remembered when I did my preaching up the West Coast and so on from the back of my truck, I remembered how even the police came and they sat there and they listened to how the, the traffic department, the traffic officers came and they just sat there and they listened. They didn't stop me. They didn't uh, block me or whatever. And even how uh, shopping centers and stuff, as I preached uh, in their parking areas, and they didn't stop me. They just received the word because they were more with us than were, that were with them, with the enemy and his people. You know, and I want to encourage you. There are more Christians today than what there are people in the world. They are more with us than that they are with them. And the angels are more than they are. So don't be afraid. And, and, and so on. So we see yeah, how he was. they were caught in their craftiness. The Bible says he catches the wise in their craftiness. God will catch the wise in their craftiness. Whatever the enemy is planning in South Africa, whatever the enemy is planning in America, whatever the enemy is planning in the world, in their own minds, in their own worldly thoughts, God will catch the wise in their craftiness. I want to encourage you with that this morning. Do not be afraid. You need to get yourself to the place where you understand the mind of God. And God will reveal things to you before they happen. God says He will do nothing without revealing it to His prophets first. And I want to tell you that you are a prophetic people. The Bible says, in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will uh, see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. So it's a prophetic generation that is raised up in this time, in the last days. We are a prophetic generation. We will see things before they happen. That's why it's important that we grow in the things of the Holy Spirit. We will see things before they happen. We will understand things before they happen. And I want to encourage you, we, ha we are carriers of His presence. We do not have to be afraid of the world. We do not have to be afraid of the enemy. God will, re will warn you when you drive on a road that's got danger ahead of you. He will warn you about it and you can turn away and you can not be in that situation. Whenever things are coming, 
He can warn you ahead of time and you can get out of that situation. But at the same time, like with, with uh, Elisha and, and the king of Aram, God went and, and Elisha said, when they came down to get him, Elisha said, Lord, uh, uh, strike them with blindness. And the Bible says they all became blind. And Elijah, when they got to him, he said, no, you're in the wrong city. This is not the right place. Let me take you to the place where you need to go. And he led that whole army blinded by the spirit of God by the power of God God can blind your enemies God can make them not see what they wanted to do God can confuse them nothing can harm you and you need to start believing that as believers so many times we're so afraid of everything that's happening around us but if we start relying on God and trusting the Holy Spirit you are a carrier of his presence and you can lead the enemy into the camp of the Israelites. And the Bible says Elisha led him into Samaria where the, where the Israelites were, where the king of Israel were. He led them into Samaria. And then he said, Lord, open their eyes. And they opened their eyes and they were in the middle of, uh, the, of Israel. And the Bible said the king said to to Elisha, my father, my father, should I kill them? And he said, no, don't kill them. But give them bread and water and let them eat and then send them on their way. <laughs> and the Bible says the raiding party stopped because they did something in goodness and in kindness and the armies didn't want to fight him anymore. And the king of Aram saw that Israel is not against them. They don't want to fight them. They don't want to do these things. And they stopped raiding the Israelites. And you see, God can use the foolish things. It can confound the wise. Foolish things can confound the wise. God can turn the hearts of people in a moment, in an instant. So don't you worry about the evil and those that are doing the things they're doing. God can turn it around in a moment. Amen. The Bible continues, it says in verse 20, And again the Lord knows, this is, uh, uh, sorry, this is, uh, 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 1 Corinthians 3, verse 20. And again, the Lord knows that the thoughts of the wise are futile. God knows that their thought, thoughts are futile. It doesn't, it's not uh, uh, good enough. It's, it's small. It's small thinking. They think small in comparison with God. It's futile. It's small. Their thinking is small. They are so small-minded in comparison with God. Let me tell you, we have so many crises in the earth today. With uh, They talk about earth. the earth is warming up and all these things. In the world, when you plan these things, it's small things to God. The wise minds are futile. God can do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think. God is a God of miracles. God can, uh, Jesus walked on water. He opens a Red Sea. He's a God of miracles. He can do things that man cannot do. And if we will turn to Him and seek Him and call on the name of the Lord, the Bible says we will be saved. And I want to encourage you this morning. Don't let the things and the worries of the world consume you. If there is too many people on the earth, God is in control. He knows how to uh, sift people out. He knows how to do it in a natural way and in the right way. You know, He knows what He's doing. God knows. And, and we must allow God to start working and give us ideas and strategies how to preserve our land and how to preserve the world. And there are people that are doing that. They are led by God to do that, to preserve, to take care, to plant again what they cut down. And then there are the ones that just wants to steal and kill and destroy. But God knows how to work these things out. He says, so there's no more boasting about human leaders. You know, so many times we just want to follow human leaders. And it's also talking about biblical leaders because he's talking about all things are yours. He says, do not follow or, or do no more boasting about human leaders or things. All things are yours. Everything in life belongs to you as a child of God. You have the ability with the power of the Spirit to do anything. All things are yours. Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or the present or the future, all are yours, says the Bible, and you are Christ's and Christ is of God. 
I just want to quickly go through that. So he says, do not boast about human leaders. All things are yours. As believers, you need to realize that you carry the presence of God again. And you carry everything that God has for your life inside of you. Everything that you need for life, you carry it inside of you. Because you are anointed. You are designed for your specific purpose. And you have everything that you need. You don't need another man's anointing. You don't need another man's calling. You don't need another man's stuff. You have everything you need for your life. Yes, we do have leaders. The Bible says the fivefold ministry is there to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. To equip you. To train you. It will be a confirmation of what God is putting inside of you. But never lose sight of hearing what God wants to do with your life. What is your passion? What has God placed in your heart? Find it from the word, find it from a prophetic word, and then find it from your leader. And your leader should cultivate you as a person, your calling, not his calling in your life. All right? And I see a lot of that going around these days. So it's whether Paul or Pastor Cephas or the world or life or death. Uh, he says, do not follow leaders. Uh, um, he says here, yeah, some follow Paul, Apollos, Cephas, or the world, or life or death. All are yours, present or future, all are yours. So in other words, um, life and death is yours. You uh, are in control of life and death. You will live until you're satisfied. With a long life will I satisfy you, says the Bible. I think Psalms 91. With a long life will I satisfy you. Your life, God will satisfy you with a life that you can live until you've lived enough. You know? So life is in your hand. Death is in your hand. The present, the future is in your hand. Whatever you say now, what you speak now, determines your future. What you believe now determines your future. It's in your hands. You have the ability to live a full life or to live a life of failure. It's in your hands. All things are yours, says the Bible. And you are Christ's. And Christ's. Christ is God's. You belong to Christ. You belong to Him. And He belongs to God. And through Him we all belong to God. And we are carriers of His presence. I want to encourage you with this word this morning. And I want you to, to take this word this week. And start thinking about yourself as a carrier of His presence. Start thinking about yourself as having the mind of God. And we're going to look at that next week. Having the mind of God and thinking like God. And all these things that I have spoken on in my YouTube videos before. But I want you to take this week and think of it. How are you treating this temple? What are you doing with your body? What are you doing with your, your opportunity to be a living being in the earth? How are you carrying the very presence of God. How are you treating the very presence of God in your church and in your body? It's important to start thinking about that. You need to discern and understand that you are a carrier of His presence. So this morning, maybe I've been talking and you sit there and you listen to this and, and it's touching you, but you say, Pastor Trevor, I don't have that. I, I have not received Jesus in my life. And this morning you want to take this opportunity and just give your life to the Lord. I want to lead you in a prayer right now. You know, maybe you are facing some troubles. Maybe you have come through where the, the wise of the wisdom of this world has affected you. Where people with their craftiness and their plans have affected you. And you need to come out of that thing and you don't want the enemy to, to destroy your life any further. Many of you are, a res your life at this point is a result of the craftiness of men. But tonight and uh, this morning, I want to pray for you and God's going to bring you out of that thing. He's going to restore you. He's going to heal you and He's going to give you wisdom. And by the guidance and the presence of His Spirit, He's going to lead you in the right path, in the right way. And you will see His plan. Last week, I said that He will teach you of sin, of righteousness and judgment. He will teach you what is wrong. He will teach you what is right. And He will teach you the judgment of the wrong and right. So you can discern between right and wrong. And that will just perfect uh, or, or, or just help you on your path to perfect your path and walk in a straight line towards what God has purposed for you. So this morning, I want to pray for you. If you need Jesus in your life right now, if you want to come to that place, Lord, and you say, Pastor Trevor, the world has affected me. The craftiness of man. Maybe they've got you out of your business. They've got you out of your ministry, got you out of your marriage, whatever it might be. And this morning, you just want God to take control of your life. 
I want to pray with you. If you say, Pastor Trevor, pray for me. I need Jesus. And maybe you just go through a difficult time. Just pray this with us. Let's just pray. Just pray after me. Say, Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. I ask you today, wash me in your blood. Cleanse me. Forgive me my sins. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And I believe that He died for me. He paid the price and the penalty for my sin upon that cross. And today I receive Him. Because all who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I am a child of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. I want to encourage you, if you prayed that prayer, you need to go and find a church. You need to go to a church that preaches the word. It's Holy Spirit filled, a church that believes in the baptism and the baptism of the Holy Spirit and a church that will teach you the word so for you to grow. You know, when you give your life to the Lord, you're like a baby in Christ and you need to learn. You know, I've been saying here yeah, that, uh, you know, you have all you have the mind of Christ, but you need to get to that place where you grow into the mind of Christ. Doesn't mean that you know everything already. But you can grow in it and the Holy Spirit will guide you into it. But you need men of God to guide you and to teach you and to bring the word so that it can take and form its place in your own mind and your own spirit and your own heart. And eventually you will find out, but this is my calling. This is what God wants me to do. And you will move into that. But you need a church. You need a church. And you need to get into your word. Go and read the book of John. Just to help yourself a little bit about the love of God and He's the light of the world, all these things. Go and read the book of John to understand the work of Jesus a little bit better and then get on and just keep on reading, you know. Um, I want to encourage you this morning. And this morning, I just want to pray once more. I just want to pray if you are sitting in a situation where the craftiness of men has broken down your life, maybe this whole COVID-19 situation because of the agendas of men, and the agendas of the world. In South Africa, your life has been broken down because the agendas of uh, the political uh, arena or whatever it might be has broken down your business, broken down your life. This morning, God can lead you into a better place. He's got more in store for you and you do not have to sit in, in, in ashes and think that it's over. This morning, God wants to restore your life. And I want to pray for you right now, no matter who you are, no matter what you've done in the past, this morning, if you come to Jesus, He will heal you. He will restore you. I'm going to pray for you. Father, right now, I pray for every man, every woman, every young person, every child, Father. I even hear a parent saying, Lord, my children has been affected by these things. My children's livelihood, my children's future has been affected by these things. I want to tell you by the Spirit of the Lord, I don't know who that is. I want to tell you that God, I see Him picking them up. And He holds them in His hands and He's telling you, do not worry, I've got this. Do not worry, I've got this. I will turn that which the enemy has meant for harm. I'm going to turn it for the good. Because you've decided to love me, and to put me first. I will take care of your children, says the Lord. I want to encourage you this morning. I can feel the presence of God. There are so many people crying out for their children in this time. And I want to tell you, God will not leave them, nor forsake them. He said, Jesus said, bring the children unto me. You know, God has got a heart for children. And He will help you as a parent for the sake of your children. This is what I'm saying to you this morning by the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is leading me. He will take care of you for the sake of your children. But give your children to God. Give them to God. Say, Lord, I give you my children. And you know, as a parent, you also need to take responsibility for their spiritual lives. You need to get up on a Sunday morning and go to a church. You need to get up and go to a place where God can work with your children, where He can, where they can grow into that. You know, last uh, few months, I, I, last three years, I had to do with so many people that came from traditional churches. And they tell me, they say, Trevor, but why didn't everyone ever tell me this? I'm 40 and 50 years old, 
And I've never heard of these things. I don't understand about the Holy Spirit. I don't understand about baptism. I don't understand about uh, how the Holy Spirit can work through me. I don't understand. I didn't know that I have a calling. And now I've wasted my whole life. As a parent, you need to bring your children up in the ways of the Lord. And that will direct them for the rest of their lives. Let me tell you, it will teach them about good and evil. You will be able to bring, and listen to what the word of the Lord is saying this morning. You will be able to, to lessen the corrupt people in the world. If you train your child in the things of the Lord, in the ways of the Lord, you will save them from being another person that is corrupt. Another person that is uh, lawless. Another person that murders, steals, rapes. You will bring them into a place where they will themselves walk into the blessing of God. When you look at your own life, right now, when you look at your own life, how many sorrows and pains have you put on yourself because you didn't know? Or because no one really encouraged you or strengthened you in what was right? Maybe you grew up without parents and you grew up without many things in your life and it hurt you and it brought you into a life of destruction. Safeguard your children. Take them to church and you yourself. Go. Don't just drop them off there. Go there. So that God can teach you how to teach them. Come on people. Come on um, people. I'm talking to you this morning. Parents, I'm talking to you. Don't let your children fall by the wayside. God has got a plan and a purpose for the church in this end time. There's going to come a great revival. And they can be forerunners in that. Or they can be the ones that are standing in the back and say, Why didn't I know? Why didn't my parents tell me about this? Why, didn't, why did I never go to church? I didn't know. This morning, you need to decide. Father, right now, I pray for every parent. I pray for every child, Lord. Father, right now, I pray for every family that has been hurt by the COVID-19, by these lockdowns. Every business that has been hurt, Father, by the craftiness of men. But Father, your word promises today and your word says that you will catch them in their craftiness, Father God. You will catch them out, Father, and that you will work together those things which the enemy has meant for our arms. You will work it together for those who love you, Father. And this morning we declare we love you, Lord. We declare that you are the answer. We declare that you are the way, the truth, and the life. And that you will lead us on the right way. You will lead us into truth. And you will lead us into life again. You have come to give us, give us life and life in abundance. The Amplified says life to the full, Father God. And we will have a full experience of life still to come. It will not end the way it is now. This is just a turnaround. This is just the, the decision-making valley of Jehoshaphat. This is just the valley where we make the change, where we make the decision, Father. And you will raise us up again, but this time for your kingdom and for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. We love you. You can see our banking details right at the bottom of the screen. And if you feel like you want to sow something into this message, into our lives, you're welcome to do so. You know, I believe that God wants to, to, to bless us. He wants to prosper us in everything we do. But then also, He wants you to be a giver. He wants you to sow seed, you know. And, and, and you sow seed in many ways by the words you speak. You sow seeds in many ways by the things you do for others. You sow seeds in every area of your life. But there's also the principle of sowing seed in the form of finances. The Bible says, bring your whole tithe into the storehouse so my house can be full. You know, and, and I, will, uh, I will pour out a blessing and I will keep the, uh, the, the locust away and all these things. Uh, I'm thinking of the scripture in Afrikaans now. I'm struggling to translate it quickly. You know, but he gives that in Malachi chapter 3. You can have a look at that. Uh, your tithes, but I don't want to talk to you about that this morning. I just want to say there's a, there's a principle of giving. And when you give, the Bible says it will come back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. And this morning, if you feel like you want to sow into our ministry, we, we called His Heart Ministries. We 
close to Stodals here in Belleville. We, we, we just opposite Stodals, there's a board that says Beehive Montessori. It's a little crash where we meet. We're still a small church. We've just planted a church about eight, nine months ago, and we're busy growing that church. And I believe that God is busy working. We feel the presence of God. We are seeking the presence of God. We're not a church that's going to rust through time. We want to give the Holy Spirit the opportunity to move. Because as people of God, we need the Holy Spirit in this time like never before. We love you. God bless you. Enjoy your day.